Hey guys, welcome back to the Girlfriends and Goals podcast YouTube channel. My name is Samaria and I'm joined by my best friend and co-host, Miosha. Today we're reviewing Married at First Sight, season 16, episode two. Mm -hmm. um, before we get started, please make sure you're subscribed to our channel. And if you enjoy this show and enjoy our review, make sure to give us a thumbs up. All right, uh, we're mm -hmm. going to start with Dominique and McKinley because we didn't really have much on them. They didn't show much of them. Um, mm -hmm. I guess next episode will probably be more, more of them because something dramatic happens at some point with those two. But yeah, yeah. Uh, anything on them? <laughs> yeah, I mean the only thing that I wrote down was that her mom and grandma look amazing. They look good. Like they look really, really, really good for their age. Um. And then the only other thing with Dominique is um, it kept coming up how her mom felt like she was picking the wrong guys. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. And I guess part of this process is someone's being picked for you. But I was also thinking um, if there's a problem with the people she's drawn to, Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's being addressed by forcing her hand to get into married a, a stranger one to get married and into a process like this I feel that maybe that also needs to be addressed as to, okay well why are you drawn to x type of people if it was uh -huh. a consistent thing so I don't know I'm, I kind of want to hear more about these people she was picking was it that they just didn't want marriage or there were other things going on and then why were you drawn to people like that? And has that been fixed or addressed, yeah. I guess? I agree with you. This is not the solution to that, especially with her being 25. I feel like, okay, she's turning over. She's gonna, um, she's 25. She's done her younger 20s. And perhaps there might be a change that she needs to make in herself. Um mm -hmm. You know, she's still having fun. She's very young. And not to say young people are still having fun and shouldn't get married, but just from what we've seen of Dominique specifically, she gives very young, like minded and young energy. And so I don't know that at 25, as a mom, I would be like, okay, go on the show and get married because I don't like who you're picking. I might be like, okay, maybe let's sit down with the therapist or something, you know? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I think this is rushed. And then when Pastor Kyle kept saying, oh, she's an old soul, old soul, I'm like, can you please stop where? saying that? Yes. Old, where? I mean, uh, she gives youthful energy, which is nothing wrong with that. She's 25. Stop trying to force this girl to be an old soul. She's not yet. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Leave what it alone. She what was she saying in the interviews that because they're committed to her being an old soul and I'm like I do not see there's nothing old soulish that she said this entire time it's only been two episodes though but there's nothing old soul about her in my opinion from what the producers have shown us yeah and that's perfectly okay and then the other thing I wanted to mention on McKinley or Mac whatever he wants to be called and I don't know if you heard this you alluded to it on the last recap that uh, this whole situation with the ex-girlfriend and how she was with someone else. Well, I heard someone say else say that, that she told him that she had broken it off with this person. Yeah. And she didn't. And I guess the other guy pulled the trigger first in terms of engagement. So she went with him and apparently she got pregnant right away too. Yeah, I, heard, I don't know if it was on the after party or what that he said that, but um, yeah, I, I did hear. So, so there was a lot more to that. And I wonder, one, when did this happen? Was yeah. it within the last year? Is he fully healed and moved on from that? And then you pair him with someone who's giving very youthful, I still want to be out there energy. I don't know how this is going to work. <laughs> I think it's going down the down the drain very fast because we saw her on the preview, I feel like walking through the hotel corridor. So I'm assuming that something happened the night of their wedding, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. That's just what I'm thinking. Oh, so I, I thought that that was a future preview, like maybe in the apartment building. I didn't even think wedding night. I thought like, oh, it's some time and maybe it was the apartment. I mean, apartment, hotel, it's hard to tell the difference sometimes it was, now. Yeah. 
okay okay maybe maybe we'll see let us know in the comments if you think it was at the hotel the night they got married or later on in the apartment corridor but yeah that that's that was my thought if she looking like that on her wedding night <laughs> this is not going to end well i know okay did you have anything else on on those two no that's Me it neither. okay <laughs> Um, so Jasmine and Eris, who they didn't show much of, I guess because they're saving, you know, these two couples for the last episode. But mm -hmm. um I I just hate it to hear Dr. Pepper say, Oh, you know, because he's a reformed player. And I'm like, do we know if he's a reformed player? Like just because you haven't been dating in the last 10 years and haven't had a relationship to practice with, like that doesn't make you a reformed player. You're not reformed unless we've seen you know, some of the reform and you've had a chance to be in a situation where that gets tested. So I hate the whole reform player thing. Cause I'm like, we don't know yet. Yeah. I think they're saying reformed and I'm not saying I agree with this, but because he's talking so much about how I've been to therapy and I've read books and mm. I've put a lot of time into addressing the is issues I need to heal from. So I'm assuming that's where they're getting reformed from. So he's reformed in theory, but not in practice. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> even the cousin isn't buying it. She was like, okay, we can leave now. Let's get up out of here. What time is it? You ready? <laughs> I got your back. <laughs> but it's, it was more, to me, it was more than I got your back. It was, let's leave now. Like, get your stuff. Come on, let's go. Yeah, um, don't don't make a fool out of yourself and ruin your life. I will say one thing that he said that I could appreciate was he said that he addressed his like insecurities around maybe not knowing how to be a man or that, what yeah. manhood is by not having that. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, that's that's big for you to be able to say that because mm -hmm. unfortunately many young men don't have fathers in their lives. And that piece is missing. So for him to admit that out loud, I felt like that was huge. Even for him to come to that realization, yeah. Oh yeah, to even get there. <laughs> I, I hope he proves us all wrong. I hope he comes out being like an amazing guy and they work out. I just, I think it's very early to test it out to this ex extreme. I agree with his cousin saying, can we get a relationship first? So yeah, I just- I think he could possibly be reformed. I don't want to be like, oh, he's not because I don't know this man. But I just think this isn't the situation you want to go into to test that out just yet. So that's just my opinion. But again, I hope he proves us wrong. Yeah, I'm also getting to, you know, he's 39. And this is just my opinion. I could be completely wrong. But I'm also getting the vibe that I've kind of ran around, did my thing. Now I'm finally ready. Not saying that he is or isn't, I don't know. Yeah. But I've seen that with guys where I don't even know if it's that they're really ready. It's more so that they're at the age where it's like, it kind of starts to look odd that you're pushing up on 40 still, like not even dating mm -hmm. one person, not married, not don't have any kids. For that, I think it happens earlier with women, but with him being at 39, 40, uh, I don't know. I just am getting the vibe that like, yeah, you're you're the older guy out here in these streets. I, I hear you. Okay. So. Well, um, I don't know if you want to talk about when they tried on their outfits, which honestly, this this episode, I could have just been tired, but I did doze off a little bit, like for a good, like maybe seven minutes. I was like, oh my God. Uh, but his, I thought his um suit looked nice, like when he tried on the the red color, and I don't know the dresses were just the dresses to me with the women. But I think next season we can cut that portion down because I don't know whose friends it was, maybe Clint's friends or someone's friends. But it's like you could tell they have forced them to have a conversation about, oh, I wonder if she's gonna put out the first night or what. It's like nobody wants to hear that. We don't care. We want these weddings to come on so we could see how these people relate to each other. Yeah, and wedding dress shopping is typically on earth. Even looking for your tux is uneventful for the most part. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll say I skipped through a lot of the, <laughs> most of the like trying on stuff because I knew nothing was going to be said. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I'll say is um, 
I wish Jasmine would have picked her first dress and she said she didn't like it because it reminded her of maybe a pageant dress she she had. I'm not the biggest fan of that like sheer material because if it's not the right color, it gives ashy vibes. And I'm not saying like she honestly with her body type, she would look gorgeous in any dress really. Mm -hmm. But that mesh for me just wasn't. Yeah, you know, it wasn't the right color. There's a star. I think she was on Orange is the New Black, but her name is Danielle. Oh, no. I feel like her last name starts with a B. But she had her wedding pictures, and the mesh was just, like, the perfect brown. Mm-hmm. And it looks so stunning. But you're right. Like, it can look, a, if, it's, if it's just a little bit off, then it's, like, too dark or too light, and you know it's not made for this particular person. So, yeah, I liked her yeah. first dress, too. But, again, like, I don't really watch the show to see the dresses, so yeah. <laughs> I could have done without that. Um, okay, next couple. Um, the only other thing was she mentioned she wants her husband to work out, and he looks to be in good shape. I don't know if he works out, but she wants I mean, him to have seen a gym. I think he yeah. looks like he's maybe seen a gym. He might yeah. not use the machinery, but like <laughs> he looks like he has seen one. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to judge when people get to the gym or not, yeah. but yeah. Um, okay, you want to do G- you want to do Gina and Clint next? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Um. Oh, it was his friends who were talking about the like putting out the first night or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one of his friends at some point said something that I like. They said concept and reality are two separate things. And when I tell you, I loved that they said that because more than most people on this season I feel like Clint needs to know that like the concept of having a person and being married it it differs greatly from actually having a person there with you and that's a realization that Mitch came to last season and Clint just gives me those vibes like he isn't thinking realistically about this Yeah, and I feel like there was just a lot of talk around what this future person is going to get in line with to fit his lifestyle. Oh, you're going to be my co-captain or you're going to go on an adventure. Okay, well, where are you going to be in her life? Um, I don't know if it was a matchmaking special or what, but I saw a recap video that talked about how his ex uh, said that she felt like she just constantly had to be trying to live up and measure up to whatever he had going on or whatever he wanted. And it, she wasn't being her authentic self. And so to hear him just talking so much about, I don't know, basically how this woman is going to fit into his life. I just kept thinking, well, okay, well, how are you going to fit into hers? Yeah. He, cause, cause he's not, he's not going to try to, he thinks it's about him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let me stop. We don't know these people, but yeah. Uh, That's the vibe I got. I'm, I'm willing to go with that. Really yeah. So I'm far. Uh, I I thought it was interesting. As soon as Gina turned the corner, uh, her mouth was wide open. And I was like, girl, that does not make for good pictures. Like she turned the corner. It was like, I don't know if that's how she smiles. <laughs> but then they like to do the slow-mo on the show and it just looked crazy. <laughs> Yeah, her mouth was open the entire time. I think that that was nervousness. Like I got nervous, smiling energy. So I think, of course, she was happy and everything, but I just got nervous and I'm just going to like keep smiling through the whole thing. So I don't come across as off-putting or that I'm like not yeah. interested in. I think she looked great though. I think her dress fit. Oh, her. she she definitely bought the glam and her squad and the mom's dress. I got flowers. the most. Yeah, I got the most glam energy. I will say I was kind of like, okay, is this it's giving beachy vibes? Because it Nothing. didn't match his. Like, what do you? Because he didn't. He didn't even try. <laughs> he was just like, for first suit he tried on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Let's go. Back it no up. tie. Um, which I would have understood that if all the groomsmen had that look too. They were all like more formal than he was. Yeah, he's just like, yep, I'm here. Um, So based on what we've seen so far, let me preface it with that. He seems like very comfortable that he can show up any way he wants and be accepted and be like, 
the star of the show. And so I think that's my concern with him is that he's coming into the marriage feeling like I can just show up however and expect that other people will accept me fully. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Like with a stranger, you kind of, I want to see that someone is willing to do some give and take, you know? Um, so I don't know. Yeah, because with the wedding, not to go back to last season, but at least Mitch showed up in a tux with a brand aid, dressed appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is a wedding. And yeah. I'm not saying that he had to have the most extravagant of tuxes. It, that's not his style. I understood that. But um, it would be almost like you showing up to a job interview and it's like in a very corporate environment and you are just showing up in jeans, blue jeans. It's like, okay, yeah. come on now. Give us something. Give us something. At least show that you tried. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that their energy at the altar seemed okay. Didn't seem overly, like they seem to be engaged in each, like with each other in the back and forth, but I also did feel like they were doing a lot of like nervous, like back yeah. and forth, like chatty, goofy. Like he said something and she was like, oh, that's so sweet. But it was like not even oh. anything sweet. I'm like, what was, I, did I miss something? Because what was sweet about that, Gina? Mm -mm. Uh, yeah. But she did lay it on him. <laughs> kiss. I mean, so she must have liked what she saw or, or he seemed to be into it. Um. Yeah. yeah, I so I put down when she had the dog come in, he was not mm. impressed at all. Like I, mm. his face wasn't giving. Oh, this is cute. His face was giving. Um, Why is this dog here? And I'm like, you have some nerve showing up just like that, judging her for bringing her pet in. But it didn't seem like he was as excited about it he later in my opinion pretended to be excited and like pet the dog and was like oh that's great but when she was like oh come on boy and then like the dog started coming he didn't seem like it's something he would have done like if this were a wedding that had been planned I don't think he would have been necessarily for it I don't know if they panned to I think it was his mom mm. she didn't look impressed either yeah, I was paying I, the camera. I felt like was on her for a minute that I didn't pay too much attention to him because you're right. He did kind of clean it up at the end. But I feel like I think it was the mom who was sitting with her legs crossed. She was just like. Right. Which is funny because I could understand, OK, why is a dog at a formal event? But when you're dressed like you're dressed like you, you don't need to be judging, sir. And this is a unique situation where you didn't get to plan your wedding together she didn't have say so with what he yeah. had on yeah. uh I just felt like they looked good together but very different vibes mm. going on so yeah. and I also wonder it, it'll be interesting to see how he feels um since he seems to be very laid back very casual you know like how he feels about women who are like really into you know, their aesthetics and because he was so like, forth. oh, she's a natural and I I not to say she's not a natural beauty, but she had her face full. Mm -hmm. She had a full face of makeup yeah. on. So I was like, was he just saying that to say it? Because I do think maybe she might be a little bit more dolled up. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking about Mitch a little too much, but I, I mm -hmm. think she might be a little more dolled up than he is. Um Mm -hmm. what else did I write down dang and dang it I guess those are the names of his boats or something yeah I wrote down that they live in the same building okay I want to know what happened there and I didn't watch the after party because like I said I was I was struggling <laughs> with staying up during this episode but I wonder if maybe she moved in after Dr. P I don't know like it, it seems weird that they would do visits Pastor Cal and Dr. Pepper would do visits to the same place and still think, oh, yeah, it's okay to match these people without considering that they might have dated before. They might know each other or might have run into each other before. So I don't know. If if they said something about it on the after party, y'all, please let us know in the comments because that just strikes me as odd. Also, same with, like, uh, Alexis and Justin, how they had 
not met in person before. I don't know. It's it's getting closer and closer together. And I think wow, y'all went through this whole process. Y'all should y'all know their addresses. I will say coincidences happen because a few seasons ago, and this is one of my favorite Married at First Sight couples, but I know Amani and Woody, this was from the New Orleans season. And they um they met they saw each other at the altar and then after some time they realized they had run into each other at a spot maybe like two weeks before because they each knew they were getting married to somebody and so he was like oh you know I saw her and she was looking nice but you know I had already committed to something and she was like yeah I saw him but I didn't think anything of it because I knew my man was coming and so Mm. like later on they put two and two together like were you at that place so they have run into each other which I think, you know, depending on how small the town is, is possible and where they're selecting people from within the town, it's possible. But the same building, like and y'all same, knew, it just seems weird. The same building in Nashville, not Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. Nashville, there's only, you're not going to confuse. You're going to know, oh, I've been to this building before. So Absolutely. I don't know. But um, Clint, Clint seems to be very optimistic. He said smooth sailing and he she even said, oh, I feel like it's going to be easy. Right. That was the thing that got me. Have y'all seen this show? It is not going to be easy. Relax. So, But I did say he was talking like he was into her when they sat down. Um, mm-hmm. He was definitely talking like he was really into her. And she said he has a nice wave to his hair. So I guess she likes that, mm-hmm. uh, what he has going on. So... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if their adventure is the same. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, is his adventure her adventure? Because she's like, oh, you know, I like the pool, laying out by the pool. And he says, when it's pool time, I'm at the lake, sis, you know? So I guess- Like I said, her good time is, oh, I'm going to Italy. Yeah. Mimosas, not sailing a boat. Yeah. Or climbing something. I don't know. And that's something he's passionate about because he said they're all sailors, like it's passed down. So, yeah, we'll see. (laughs) Um, Okay, so let's do Nicole and Chris next. I'm actually excited about these two. Why? Because I feel like out of everyone they both seem to be the most open yes. leading up to their weddings and didn't have I don't want to say super high expectations but they seem to be the most grounded around the process that they signed up for and expectations and um that's not to say that you shouldn't have expectations at all they just seem to be the most open most flexible focusing thing on things outside of the physical yes. in that they really seem like, okay, I'm trusting the experts to pick someone that will match with me below the surface. So I I was just pleasantly surprised by everything the both of them were saying leading up to the weddings. And I'm like, see, this is what you need to come into this process with. Yeah. Yeah. Like when she, when she was talking to her, her family during the like bridal, uh, I guess, shopping, and she was not even trying to figure out what he might look like. She wasn't even trying to play the game of, oh, well, if he looks like this, would you be happy? She's like, I'm not even going to think about what he looks like. I'm just going to go with it. And I respected that so much because I think if you're coming on a show like this, you shouldn't be like, oh, he can't have a, a, a bald head, which we'll get to later. But yeah, I agree with you on that. I think I think a potential issue <laughs> because when she met him, she was going like a mile a minute, at least to the to the diary cam. I, I think she was able to rein it in a little bit when they mm-hmm. were meeting and talking, but uh, where they said, well, what questions would you ask him? And sis was like, she had yeah. a scroll, but not like, not a physical scroll, one in her head and just started listing stuff off. I'm like, I appreciate the types of questions because she is really trying to get to know him and I think those are probably important questions for what a relationship would look like for her but I'm just like well I wonder how she's gonna present those because yeah she she (laughs) is a lot but I think the difference between her and some other people who aren't even as maybe like as extroverted and talkative is that she seems to be very aware And I feel like that's the biggest difference. It's not to say that you can't have a big personality and be talkative and all that, but 
and for you to know like okay this can be a problem that also means that if a person maybe addresses you about it you're like oh this is something I know about myself and maybe even willing to tone it down so that it's not too much for the other person it seems like she's been told this <laughs> a lot because yeah, how open how yeah, like how open she is about it and willing to be corrected about it. Yeah. So yeah. now we'll see what that looks like in practice. Yeah. But she's talking a good game right now, which I wish that I saw a little bit more of that in the other people. But yeah, I uh, I loved like before the wedding when her mom was pretty much like, please don't sleep with this man tonight. <laughs> like I know. Just like, you know, maybe just take things slow, which I don't know if that's something that she's taken fast in the past. And her mom was just trying to like gently say, hey, maybe slow it down. But I thought that was really funny. <laughs> like her mom, and the way that her mom presented it, I thought was very sweet. And then when they did the gift exchange and she flipped out about it um, in a positive way, like she wasn't angry, but like when she was so deeply appreciative of the gift that he had given her and really saw meaning to it. I think that's that's what you want. Like when, when someone gives you a gift or you give someone a gift and you see how willing to appreciate the gift they are as opposed to nitpicking and being like, oh, it could have been this stone or that stone. Like I, that's what I mean when I say, I think she's very like open to the process because no matter what he brings, I mean, I don't want to say no matter what he brings, but whatever he brings, um, she's willing to accept and work around it. And maybe he's the same way too. Yeah, uh, she, I feel like both of them really, 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 really want this to work. I will say she said something where I was just like, oh, I understand the enthusiasm and the passion, but she said, if it doesn't work with him, she said she doesn't know if she deserves to be anyone else's wife. Mm -hmm. That was, I was like, yeah. I was like, dang, girl, you, you are in. Um, I did enjoy their time at the altar. It felt very natural. And I felt like she was trying to control as much as she could. <laughs> she was really trying because I feel like there were times where you could tell she was just waiting to talk. <laughs> she was so excited. But you know, she was just, she was excited about it, but I feel like she did a good job of keeping it together, not doing too much. Um, he seemed to be really into her. Yeah. So I mean, I enjoyed their time at the altar. I'm excited about them. He, I feel like both of them said that they feel like it would be a failure if it didn't work. And so I don't know. I, I have high hopes for them at this point. I do too. Well, um, I don't know. I don't want to say that yet, but I definitely hope it worked out because I can see how seriously both of them are taking it. And then it's interesting when they were reading about her at the altar and they said, oh, she talks a lot. His people said, I think he said me too. So mm -hmm. maybe it's when he gets comfortable, but when they sat down, she was kind of, um, pushing the conversation forward a little bit. And he was, reacting to that and receptive um to that so I I, I like them so far <laughs> I don't want to have high hopes because I am still very aware of the show that this is and you know previous seasons but they are both taking it very seriously which is what at least as the audience we want to see yes I out of everyone I feel like they came in with the right mindset and expectations for what this is. I don't know what these other people are thinking. Yeah, neither do I. I, I like Gina so far. Yeah, 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 I like her, yeah. But it's just the other matches. Um, da, da. Oh, when they were sitting down and she said, I feel like we're still pretending. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, I like that because it's true. They, mm -hmm. they are still pretending. And I kind of like it when people are very upfront about what's going on, like, okay, we don't know each other yet, so we are still pretending. But I think it also goes to show that she's not a, a surface level person. She's ready to get deep. And so mm -hmm. I hope she's ready to get deep with her um, so that they're not at the pretending phase yet. So I, I hope that she makes him feel comfortable enough that they can go deeper because I'm that type of person too. I love a deep conversation. I don't mm -hmm. want to do the small talk all the time. Like, 
tell me, tell me who your your grandparents were and your relationship with them or their parents are like, like, tell me everything. I, I want the depth. So I, I could definitely feel her on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Else on those two? No, that's it. Other than they got you shook out here to take a stance on. <laughs> Or if you like these couples, y'all got her scared. Because <laughs> we, we know how this show goes. I mean, okay. but I will say this is the first couple I feel like in a while that we've had the potential to have high hopes for. Mm-hmm. I think Justin and Alexis on the first day, I did like them. Um, mm. But I think we always pointed out mm, he might be a little bit uh, too much for her as far as emotion goes. And we loved her soft space for him initially but it was kind of hard to maintain and then so yeah i i can't see the potential there that's a, that's all i'm willing to commit to right now <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> kirsten mm. and shaquille did we talk about him being younger than her last week because i feel like i might have said something briefly like oh he's a little bit younger but you know that might be an issue well I think you did, but I thought they're like a year apart. So 31 and 32. Yeah, but apparently, so it's one of those things where she said they're two years apart. So I think someone's birthday might fall later on in the year or something like that. So where he, like she's 32 now, but she might be turning 33 later in the year. And then he's already 31 and he won't be 31 until the 32 until the next year. Yeah, because she said he's two years younger than her. And all she knows is like the year he was born. Hmm. So, okay. so if he's born 90, then she must be born 88. Or yeah, but that math isn't math. Was he yeah. born in 90? I thought he said 89. Uh-uh. He definitely he said something with a 90. I don't he know said 90. Born. Oh. Maybe he's well, born. I mean, to me, it's a mute point. I mean, oh yeah. Um, I mean, for for a process like this, I'd assume that they'd ask you what's the age range that you're comfortable with. So I don't understand. Like that's a no brainer. I don't understand if she said, "Oh, I'm open to someone in their early 30s." Then you should be open to someone who's between 30 and say 35. Yeah, it's not like he's 27. <laughs> yeah, and you're 32, like. I, I here's what I think I think if she would have come down the aisle and been attracted to him the age wouldn't have been a problem the ball hair wouldn't have been a problem but as soon as she turned the corner you could <laughs> like I wish I would have recorded that moment because she turned the corner and she was smiling she saw him and she literally stopped smiling and put her head down and then remember where she was and picked her head up again and started smiling again. All of that happened in like two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> you could just tell she was disappointed when she turned the corner. Yeah. So I I think that's the beginning of all the issues right there is her disappoint her disappointment. And like she got to the altar and gave a sigh, but it wasn't a sigh of, res- of relief. It was a sigh of disappointment. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, we got to do this for eight weeks. Okay, cool. Yeah, what was interesting to me is that her family described her as the life of the party. <laughs> I'm like, that's interesting. This is my first time hearing her being described that way. And I didn't get that vibe, but maybe. <laughs> Miosha's like I think she's quite boring actually <laughs> but no it's not that I think she's boring it's just life of the party I would have given that to Dominique the, the vibes I've been getting so far but yeah yeah I don't know Especially based um, on, like, the bachelorette stuff too yeah I mean I don't know was the so she said she gave him two strikes was the first the age and the second the bald head yes but before mm-hmm. we get there I do mm-hmm. want to say, she says something like, today I look like a beauty and other days I may be a beast. And I thought that was really interesting. Did you not hear that? I did. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I thought that was really interesting because I'm like, dang, that's a... To put that in your vows to a stranger, I thought was very interesting. Um, But yeah, so that was something I noticed. And then, of course, the church hug. 
at the office. Yeah. <laughs> He, he seemed to be thoroughly satisfied. She was disappointed. Um, it seemed like she was just trying to get through it. I will say, I don't even know that she complimented him at the altar. At least we didn't hear it. He complimented her a few times. They didn't show her complimenting him until they were like walking out. And he said something again. And then she was like, oh, you have a nice tux. No, she said uh, bow tie because he had oh, made bow tie. Oh. Like, oh, I made that. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Uh, but yeah, I yeah, I I think she's southern, and so she was trying to be polite. But you could mm. tell it was a politeness. He couldn't tell, <laughs> so I guess that's good for them. But uh, yeah, what did he say? Like, oh, when she went to the cheek, he was like, oh, I can um respect that. You know, she's establishing boundaries so sweet um, right like now she don't like you but I, I did think that was very sweet that he's taking the glass half full approach because I think he will need that we'll see how long it lasts because I don't know that I think when you're coming in giving the glass half full approach and the other person is empty 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 then that does kind of like wear and tear on like you so I wonder how long it will last just because I don't think she's going to be giving any like there's gonna be no reciprocity so I don't know um I'm gonna try to say this the nicest way that I can but people who come into this process like Kirsten who admit that they're picky they're hard to please they have these very specific physical requirements really annoy me Um, and I understand that people are entitled to, you know, what they want physically, emotionally, all of those things, but this is just not the process for it. And so the way that it came across, I will also say because Shaquille is an attractive person. um, Yeah, right. So I think it, for her, it makes her look worse, to be honest, because he is an attractive person with a nice personality to match it, as she said, oh, he has two strikes, but, um, you know, thankfully his personality is so far as making up for it. His exterior. Mm -hmm. Because he is a good looking guy, just not specifically what she wants. It makes her look worse. And I feel for her because I'm a woman. I want what I want in terms of aesthetics and my partner, but that is just not, this is just not the process for it. So it makes her look really bad when she's saying stuff like that. Um, And he's also not a bad looking guy. It makes, it makes her look even worse, especially since um, she, she's just seeing him within like the first few minutes that like confessional cam is like, dang girl, you couldn't wait to find two, not one thing, but two things. And it's not even that he said something wrong or did something wrong. If anything, I, I I would have understood if she said like, Oh, I felt a little uncomfortable when he went in for the kiss and I wanted him to ask first, but But she didn't say that. that. I wouldn't even understand that you're on a show to get married, to to get married. That's what people do at the altar. And, and this is something that upsets me in relationships when people don't communicate their, their needs and then just expect the other person to know so obviously like she didn't have a way of communicating this before so she should have given a lot of grace like okay I actually don't want to kiss you I want you to ask to kiss me it's something that is communicated you know and then the person does what you communicated or does not and then you have to make decisions based off of that but how is he supposed to know that at a wedding where the ceremony calls for him coming to kiss you that you want him to ask when you're a stranger and he's never met you and now you're holding him to a standard that he would have he would have failed completely unless he was psychic (laughs) like he would have never gotten that right I was trying to give her something um I would also say too that had he not went in for the kiss she she could have taken it as like oh is he not attracted to me because the pastor called for him to do it and he yeah. didn't do it or asked or hesitated or whatever. But yeah, I, um, I'm not here for them right now, specifically her. Yeah. I, I could appreciate that she's trying to be sweet about it. 
Um, but that doesn't take away from me being annoyed that you'd signed up for this process. And um, I understand you feeling how you feel, but you saying that this man already has two strikes. This is what you count as two strikes. You came in looking for, you came in looking for strikes. So the opposite of Nicole, where it's like, whatever he brings, you know, I'm going to try to roll with it. She came in looking for things to be wrong. That's not a strike. A strike is he's talking to you crazy, or, you know, he isn't trying to listen to your point of view and make the relationship work or be flexible with you. But a ball head and on top of the fact, he was born <laughs> on top of the fact, so two things he can't control. So he could have had a full head of hair this year and then not next year like that's how balding works so <laughs> she would have met him I guess been okay with it and then not wanted to be with him when he actually went bald so yeah it's not adding up I feel like she went into this um probably this is just like she said a part of her personality where she's just picky and I I do wonder I don't know like she's very beautiful but this like pickiness there's something there. Let's be clear. We had Jasmina on the show. We've seen beautiful women before. If this, this ain't nothing new. <laughs> like, yeah, girl, everybody beautiful at this point. Um, <laughs> you talking about how at least his personality is great. Okay, yours is not. Because and, you're really showing your behind. Yeah, it's like as beautiful as you are, is this how you're going to act on national television? With a guy, when when I saw them paired together, it's not like, oh, she's a so 10 much. and he's a he's a three. Like, yeah. y'all, y'all are on par. Yeah. But I feel like the way she's carrying herself, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't be confident as a woman. I think we oh, all yeah. should be. You should think you're the ish and more. Yeah. But it's like she has this energy of like, I'm above. And, and y'all are down here. He's down here. Um, I do wonder, though, what the dynamics would have been if they had paired her with someone who was like uber attractive in her eyes. And she came in, I guess, maybe feeling like, oh, OK, this is what I wanted. Mm. Would that energy be there? But because he was just like gushing and so into her, I think she's going to take that and run with it. That's just my opinion. And I think with her being nice, uh is it really nice if you're faking it you know like I I think you can tell when someone's nice for real like you can tell real kindness versus oh I'm putting on like a show or this is a facade and I think it will be very evident soon that it's a facade you know like oh I'm just oh, yeah. going through this and going through the motions and it to me it was a little obvious uh, at the wedding but, you know, of course, I have more information than he has. And just to your point about, oh, she should think she's beautiful. I, I think what's going on right now is exactly what you and I would want to happen, where the guy is really into, like, I love when the guy is really into the woman. And, mm -hmm. you know, when, even when they sat down, he was carrying the conversation. He was moving from this point to that point. I love it when the guy is all in on the woman because I want the women to feel like, oh, wow, like I'm really desired here, you know, and then have the chance to reciprocate. I love that. But when I see how she's treating him, I'm like, get get she somebody else for my boy Shaq, please. Get, get somebody else for him. <laughs> I know. Yeah, this I don't, I don't have high hopes for this. Um, I do. I could see both of them. Um, carrying themselves with a certain amount of decorum through the process I just don't get the vibe that they're going to show completely out but um yeah this Kirsten girl this isn't looking good for you and I I I want her to be able to hold it together be honest if she's not attracted to him that's okay but don't play in our faces yeah for the whole season um and like you said it was obvious to us but we got a chance to see her in a in a different energy so like for him he's like well maybe she's just nervous and it's the wedding day like he literally has no baseline yeah but we've seen more of her but it's going to be obvious I mean 
he has life experience and based off of how he looks he has dating experience he knows when a woman is into him and when she's not I think it'll be obvious very soon but do you think I want to ask you this do you think just based on how he's like trying to make her comfortable do you think he can woo her so I think he could woo her and it could work if she has a light bulb moment okay that's the only way it's gonna work um I think right now based off of everything that she said it's like okay yeah I've gone into this process but I still want what I want Mm -hmm. the reality is is beautiful as you are smart as you are whatever girl you signed yourself up for this process Mm -hmm. based off of what we know and so I think she would have to have like a big light bulb moment like wow they found someone who really clicks with me below the surface Mm -hmm. If she doesn't have that light bulb moment, it's not going to matter. And, you know, I don't, because she was like so vocal about like the age and the, you know, how he looks. um, She just may be one of those people who puts a high value on how you present as a couple in aesthetics. Yeah. Um, Even just, I can tell maybe just how the way she carries herself. So if it's really important to her that like her partner is a 10 or whatever, in the looks department and how they're going to look as a couple and what people are going to think of them, then I don't care what he does. He, he may not be able to convince her. Yeah. He should be an option. I think he's a 10 for some way. So like, I, Oh yeah. I, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not saying he's not, but I do feel yeah. like, yeah, for some women he could, he could be, he's an attractive man. Um, mm-hmm. so anyway, those are our thoughts. Um, Please let us know in the comments what you guys think about all of these couples. And uh, we'll be back next week. Don't forget to check out our podcast, Girlfriends and Goals podcast, of course, on um, like Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Should be pretty much everywhere you would look for a podcast. And we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.